Well, Conservative MP James Bizan and Liberal MP Christia Freeland have both traveled to Ukraine in recent months, and they join us now live for their take on the latest developments. James, I want to start with you. Very strong warnings from the Prime Minister today. Words like militaristic uh, aggression, aggression, hearing John Baird saying, uh, I don't know what Russia's thinking, if they think anyone believes they're not behind what's going on in eastern Ukraine. What ultimately is the Canadian government prepared to do to deter Russia from further action? Well, we're going to continue to engage them uh, in, in every way, shape and form possible to de-escalate the situation and to get Russia outside of Ukraine. Uh, everything that we're seeing on the streets right now and, 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 and as, as the ambassador was just saying in the small villages and towns and smaller cities, never mind what we see in Donetsk uh, and Luhansk and, and Kharkiv, uh, what's taking place is, is definitely orchestrated by Russia. These are all special, Russian special forces that we're seeing on the ground with Russian equipment, even though uh, they're not wearing any insignia and, and not giving away their nationality. Uh, I think everybody sees exactly what's happening right now in eastern Russia what, or eastern Ukraine, what took place in Crimea. And in a meeting I had today with uh, some uh, first generation uh, Ukrainian Canadians, uh, some of them school teachers, some of them in the medical profession here in, in Manitoba, uh, they're in contact with, with family and friends back in Ukraine and uh, what they're hearing is that the protesters you see on the street are getting paid uh, 500 hryvnia, uh, the Ukrainian currency per day to stand on the streets and protest and if you're prepared to occupy a, a government building they'll give you 500 US dollars per day to do that and so in, in the economy that we have right now in Ukraine essentially you have Russia quite freely going in there and hiring their thugs and hiring a, a rent a crowd uh, to, to bring about um, these types of protests that we're seeing across eastern Ukraine. Very interesting, James. And Christian, I want to ask you, because you've also traveled to Ukraine, you have family there. What is this like for people who are there on the ground? What are you hearing? Uh, the thought of Russian special forces potentially coming in, that must be terrifying for the average Ukrainian civilian. People are really scared. People are really worried. People are seriously talking about, my friends are seriously talking about whether they should be sending their children outside Ukraine. At the same time, I really think that we shouldn't underestimate how serious the majority of Ukrainians are about defending themselves and defending their country. The really difficult thing for Ukraine right now and for the Ukrainian government is that they are absolutely determined to hold the presidential elections next month. And they don't want to offer through any tough actions by the Ukrainian government and by the Ukrainian armed forces, they don't want to offer any pretext for Russia to invade. They're very concerned about declaring a Ukrainian state of emergency, which is what they would need to do for the Ukrainian military response to be stepped up, because if Ukraine were to do that, then the presidential elections could not be held. And the Ukrainian authorities realize that if that were to happen, they realize that's a goal of the Kremlin, of Russia, because that would undermine the legitimacy of the Ukrainian government. That's a very interesting point, Christia. Are you hearing from these people that they think that Russia is basically trying to provoke Ukraine into reacting? Is this a strategic move in advance of the elections? Absolutely. I mean, what the Russians are doing is putting Ukraine in an incredibly difficult political position. You know, on the one hand, if the Ukrainian government reaction is, is, is relatively restrained, then the Ukrainian government has to watch these provocations, this sort of Crimean scenario beginning to be played out in the smaller towns of eastern Ukraine, a, a loss of control and a decrease in the political stability of the country. That's a very bad scenario. But on the other hand, the Ukrainian government realizes that declaring a state of emergency and having a full-on military reaction would, first of all, mean that the elections could not be held, and second of all, could be just the pretext that Russia is looking for to fully invade eastern Ukraine. Uh, James, when we look at this situation and we hear all the warnings from Canada and the very strong words, does any of it really resonate with somebody like Vladimir Putin, who is very much old school KGB, uh, and a, a question of basically whose stick is bigger in the battle, if he thinks he can get away with it, do all the Canadian warnings in the world face him? Well, I think that what uh, 
Prime Minister Harper has been showing some just incredible leadership on the world stage and taking such a strong position against Vladimir Putin and the Russian regime. And uh, by sending John Baird again uh, into uh, Eastern Europe, uh, to show that we stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine that were there along with our NATO partners. Uh, just, he just got back from being in Romania and Moldova and now he's going to Poland and Estonia and Latvia and, and going to continue to and the Czech Republic and, and just show that, that these former Soviet states will not fall to, to Vladimir Putin who has this, whether it's a Stalinistic or an imperialistic approach, uh, he, he is an individual that definitely has a vision of restoring the uh, former borders of the Russian Empire. Part. And so we have to start preparing to, to, to uh, take further actions against them. And so we're going to continue to pull all the diplomatic levers as possible. The conversation, as you mentioned earlier, Mercedes, between Obama and Putin uh, hopefully will be fruitful. But uh, to speak to, to, to some of the comments that were made earlier by Mr. Mulcair about, about the UN uh, finding a resolution, I don't know how that's going to be possible when you have Russia holding a veto uh, at the UN Security Council, which will just make the UN completely useless as this thing starts to heat up. Uh, so we hope that um, through diplomacy, through tough language, through continued sanctions, targeted sanctions against uh, uh, Russian oligarchs and, and kleptocrats who surround Putin, we will be able to um, bring about the change and have him back away. We definitely are seeing further isolation as China and other major world powers are walking away from their Russian relationships. James and Christia, thank you both very much for your time on uh, what is certainly a very frightening situation for the people in Ukraine. Great to be with you. Thank you, Mercedes.